Hi, everyone. It's Henry DeVries for Agency Rainmaker TV. And this is where we help small to mid-size agencies make it rain. And that means more right fit clients and have a great guest all the way from Alaska with us today, uh, Marianne Pruitt. Welcome, Marianne. So good to see you today. You too, Henry. Thanks for having me on. Well, let's get right into it. Um, who do you serve? Tell us about Mosaic Media and who you serve. So Mosaic Media is a full service paid media agency. So all we do is in the paid media space. We work uh, direct to brand with in-house marketing teams to for their full media strategy, paid media as a whole um, and implementation. But we also then serve agencies uh, to make sure that they have the media support that they need, whether or not they have a paid media department or if they do and the paid media department needs extra help, or if there's certain specialties that we offer that can help make that media team a little bit more robust. And I was the president of an ad agency. We always outsourced media buying to the experts. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's expensive to uh, have it in-house and you gotta keep feeding the beast and the demand goes up and down. And uh, so it's so great to hear there's people like you. So. Well, what is your what? What do you do for these other agencies? So we do fully support the paid media arm. So like, just like you said, paid media is such an expertise, especially in today's world. So when I started in media over 25 years ago, uh, it wasn't, you had your few options. You had your TV, radio, print, outdoor, that's it. Now in today's world, you have so many different options and so many different strategy points that clients know and need that think that they need or what they want to do with it. And so what happens is, it becomes more and more expensive for agencies to have that in-house, but we give that best of both worlds where you feel like you have the team. We become part of that team for you to either supplement what you currently have or to then outline for you and be that arm for you and be your complete media department. Uh, we have the model for both. And a big piece of it is the programmatic arm, um, which is digital placement in a bidding process. That is a huge piece that clients ask for that is very expensive to bring in house and to have in house. So we provide that for agencies. Tell me more about the digital bidding process. Uh, is it a Dutch auction where the price goes down or is it the price going up? How's this work? All the above. So when I, I mentioned when I started in media 25 years ago, a big piece of it would be that you would call a rep, you would get a rate card, you would get a rate, you'd negotiate that rate, then your air, your spots would air, uh, your creative would run, and that's all you had to do. Now in today's world with a bidding process, because now we're seeing a lot of different elements, even traditional tactics starting to move in a programmatic bidding world, we automate that and we bid by impression. But the great thing is, is that we're also able to target specific behaviors, individuals based off of habits, based off of behaviors, based off of who they are as a target audience. And that makes a big difference because we are gone of the days of demographics where we could just say an adult 18 to 54 is who we're targeting. Now we can say, okay, actually I want that 27 year old male who is, and we list it out. And those are the habits that we can go after and bid the impressions. It actually can make your paid media more efficient and stronger in what you're doing. And so this is things that clients um, want more and more of because they need their dollars to be more efficient than ever. But agencies, it's hard to bring that in-house because of the fact that it can be very expensive to be direct seats and to be able to be on a DSP directly without it costing an arm and a leg for you. I think that's a big takeaway in that you have niched down, you have super niched a service and a clientele and it's that expertise you provide. How did you come to decide to do that? It really, you know, media was my background. Um, but frankly, I'm a big believer. If you listen to your audience, they will tell you what they need. And that is really where we started down that path of just going down the paid media side and just doing the paid media arm. Um, I'm a huge believer in niching down, always have been, but finding a true service to niche down and finding that audience to niche down to is really important. And what happens is, you know, direct to brand, there's a lot of in-house agencies and they act as agencies, but they can't provide this service as well because it is a lot of overhead. You have to have people to manage, but you also have to meet certain minimums and you have to do certain things. So when you partner with us, you don't have to meet those minimums. You don't have to bring on the overhead. Our team can provide that for you. So when you listen to your target audience, uh, your target audience will tell you what they need and what services they're needing at their front door. 
and we make money by giving people what they want at a value that we can make at a profit. Yep. Business yep. isn't complicated. <laughs> We've overcomplicated at times, don't we? Yeah. You overthink know. it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But it's not it's not easy. It's it's no. not complicated, but it's not easy. That's so good job. How long have you been in business? So we've been in business since 2011 and really have focused on that um, and only been in that paid media space. Of course, we started as a generalist agency because I think most agencies do start that thinking that that's what they need to be. Uh, but then we listen to clients, we listen to what they want. And my specialty was in media. So I knew that that's exactly where we needed to go. And truly, it is the specialty that people are asking for more and more, even like I said, the direct in-house agencies that are there, they need it. Agencies that are working for clients and on a client and multiple clients behalf, they need it. So it really is a service that provides um, very wide span of who in budgets. We see budgets galore and we see a lot and wide variety as well. So I usually don't ask why questions because I find why questions sound judgmental. Mm -hmm. like, why did you do that? Or equivalent to what were you thinking or please explain <laughs> to me your thinking when you did this but i have to ask why alaska oh well alaska has just happened to be where i live so uh that is where my home is but the most of our clients the majority of our clients are in the rest of the country and globally so we serve all of north america and we have some international clients as well uh, across the globe so alaska though is a place that I love and I am an outdoors girl and I love Alaska. It is my home. I do travel a lot because I live in Alaska. So I'm in the rest of the country uh, quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, it is a place that is just, I say everybody has to visit it at least once in their life. Okay. Well, it's one of the four states I have not been to yet. Oh, so it is to go on my least. list. Okay. <laughs> well, um, let's go to the, uh, how do you make it rain question? So how do you make it rain? I'm a big believer, again, back to your target audience and knowing your target audience and how do you then focus on what they need? What is it that they are looking for and start to adapt in that? So as the CEO and president of an agency, what's really important is that I'm looking five to 10 steps down the road. What's coming next? Where are things going? What are clients asking for? How are things adapting? So that we're constantly evolving, not being reactive. You need to be proactive and what those things look like down the road. So that's, you know, being out there and talking and knowing who your target audience is, is actually the number one challenge that any business needs to face and look at. Because when we look at the audience of one of who we're looking at targeting, then everything else starts to fall into place. Because when there's an audience of one, there's actually thousands and tens of thousands that are around that audience of one that are exactly the same. May I pay you a compliment? Of course. Well, I've really liked observing you. This sounds like I'm watching, like stalking, <laughs> stalker, but observing you at the Agency Management Institute oh, workshops you. because you're also very good at listening to all the other agencies and their issues and their problems, and you're taking it in. Um, and then you and I both uh, uh, get teased at these events because uh, we're... Uh, um, the, the, the workshop leader likes to tease us. Yes, we're good for sure. Sports. For sure. So, yes. uh, yeah, but that's, um, that's bordering on teacher pet kind of day. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm a big believer that we are better together and we learn from each other, but whatever I can do to provide help, that's what my, that's what I'm here for is to help people overall. And when we approach things in a helpful manner, that helps you just overall in life. May I ask another question? Of so this is the extra curious question. So um, just a little quick overview of your team and that uh, uh, and Lance is on your team and and how do you feel about being we're, we're baseball fans. I was using the football analogy. Uh, You're the quarterback of this team. <laughs> yeah. Responsibility there. Tell me about that. Well, and I am, I am a football fan also. So that's an okay analogy to have. Uh, but what the responsibility of being the quarterback is, you know, not only was 
am I the founder, but then it's also being the quarterback to make sure and leading the team. So it's, in my opinion, it's really important as the leader that you know your team, no matter how big it gets, that you still have a culture line that is you and you don't lose that. And that's really important that, um, you know, for us, a big piece of culture is family first. Like we always put our families first, is people first. That means our clients. That means everybody. We are in constant communication. It is transparency. It's how we treat people, how they want to be treated and how we want to be treated. So those are the things that as a quarterback, it's actually making sure that not only are you calling the right plays, and that you are leading out the right place, but that you're leading at, on and off the field, that you know your team, you know who they are, and that you really truly get to know them of what makes them tick and what their goals are. And I think it's a really important manner as leaders that we invest in that and are intentional in that. Spoken very well as a quarterback. <laughs> Something I've learned also is, you know, we're, we're out there in the front position a lot. Um, but I've learned that if I'm out there and you're, you know, I'm in California, you're from Alaska, we're way out doing something to call back to the team and say, had a great day today, did this, met this, you know, we're, um, we're going to, you know, we're, we're in the finals on this client. Um, because even though they're not front, they really see themselves as it's a team and they like to be appreciated. So it's like you're very appreciative yeah. of your team. And it's a culture that you have to build to show the team. You can be the leader, but you have to build that team culture. And it is really important, not just to call back, but to also um, let them know everything that's going on. Like our team is spread out throughout the country. And so it really is being intentional. That's a key word for me this year. That's been a big word for me is being intentional on those things and carrying that out for them as well. That's and great. frankly, we can't do what we do without that team behind us. No way. And that quarterback needs seven people blocking for him. Easily. And some receivers are running back. Okay. <laughs> Good analogy. And as we move it down the field, well, it's football season. And it is. coming up to bowl games and playoffs. So this is on our mind. Well, Marianne, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to have you back one day as a guest. If you'd be open to that. Uh, lots of insights. And then uh, to everyone, until our next episode, make it rain.